Thanks for joining us. Now, two judges are sitting in the Obuasi prisons in the Ashanti region with the aim of reducing the current 75 demand, remand population. Um, the Justice for All program was activated by the judiciary after two joint news documentaries on the state of Ghana prisons, which highlighted serious overcrowding and inhumane conditions there. Seth Kwame Boating is with the team and has joined us via Skype. Um, Seth, thanks for joining us. First of all, how big is this prison and what is the original capacity? Right, so Seth is joining us via phone. So, uh, Seth, how big is the prison? What's the original capacity? Oh, oh, okay, so, so this prison is a very small one. It is situated right in the center of Obuase. And, uh, Daniel, it's supposed to accommodate only 100 inmates. Only 100. But presently, the population here is almost 300. When you go to some of the cells, for example, a cell supposed to take about 30 uh, has, has 53 now. One other cell supposed to take 30 inmates, also has 66 inmates in that cell. And uh, the remand population here is 75. Uh, is the reason the judges are here today to see what they can do to make sure that uh, mm -hmm. some uh, sentence or some are granted bail and go home. So how many people are appearing before the judges today? Uh, today, about 37. Uh, people are appearing before the judges today. And as I speak, the last time I checked, almost 15 had appeared uh, in the two courts. From one of the courts, for example, that's court one, seven, seven cases uh, had been dealt with, five people had been granted bail, one case had been dismissed. Um, same is happening in the second court. But what is interesting today is that most of the people appearing before these two judges are very young, 20 years of age. And they've committed various crimes. For example, a 20-year-old gentleman who appeared before one court had raped the auntie. And um, the judge was surprised he did that. So they went back and forth and dealt with his case. And um, he has been granted bail. Another gentleman is right before one court. And he also shot the father. Apparently, uh, the father had separated the mother. He alleged that he was dismissed from home. So out of anger, he went for a gun shot, the, the father. And that case has been determined as we speak. Right. Thank you very much, Seth Kwame Boating, for that report from there. Now, the Ghana Education Service is allaying fears of candidates sitting this year's basic education certificate examination. BECE about their inability um, in selecting their preferred senior high schools ahead of the BC exams on Monday, June 4. The norm over the years has been that BC candidates choose their schools before sitting the exam. This is not the case this year and is causing worry among candidates and parents. The GES in a statement says all candidates will be given up to three weeks after the exams to select their high schools. Public Relations Officer of the GES, Cassandra Chum Ampofo, has joined us on the phone with more. Good afternoon, Cassandra. Thanks for your time. Good afternoon. So why has the process changed this year? Thank you very much. And I want to say a very good afternoon to your viewers and listeners as well. Um, we came out with a new policy guideline from the school select. As a result, we have changed the 2018 of the existing school register. We have regrouped the options previously into CATIC. We have introduced another, this time there are two five schools. And the number of schools will be chosen in each category has also changed. And so as a result of this new um, policy guideline, YX needed to also design their software. You know, they choose their schools on YX platform or portal. And right. so YX also needed to design their software to fit into this new policy. And right. so work on this accounted for the delay. And that is why we are assuring our candidates that there is no cause for alarm. We have made that possible. And so we'll give them the opportunity to choose their school. 
from what you're saying, this delay has been to allow WAEC to set up its systems well, to accommodate the system. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are we are working on on the on the new guidelines. Yes, and we are being in touch, ensuring that then everything is to normal. Does that mean that we should not expect something like this happening in subsequent years? Absolutely not, because we are introducing a new guideline. That is why, and we need to ensure that everything is done up right. That is why the delay. Students are going to be choosing their schools three weeks after they write the BEC. How sure are we that we are even going to get the students in one place and that we would not affect the calendar of the senior high schools going forward? It's not going to affect them because we are saying that right after they, you know, they are starting on Monday, so we want them to focus, to be calm, and then they, they will be able to write their paper. But we are saying that right after, from that Monday, to a maximum of three weeks, we are expecting that all would be able to choose their school. And we are very hopeful that this will not um, delay any process or this will not draw the academic calendar of the senior high school staff. Right, thank you very much, Cassandra Chuma Ampofu. She speaks for the Ghana Education Service. Meanwhile, some private schools have employed the services of psychologists to prepare their candidates ahead of the BEC, which starts next week, Monday. Charity Bartels and MFA Jodosi have visited some schools here in Accra to speak to some pupils and teachers ahead of the exam. I, I think they are well prepared. They're saying that when they get to Form 3, from first term to the right of BEC, we camp them. So we are able to give them enough time. Right from dawn class to evening class, the dawn class starts at 4. So from 4 to 6, it's a serious class that we have for them. Then say there's a break and then there are normal class at 8. So we, we've assessed all these things and then we are sure that they are well prepared to write their beast without any difficulty. From, from the beginning of the term to the end, to the term ends in Form 3, so that they can have full time for their studies. You know, at home, parents might one way or the other distract them, but in the school, when they are calm, it's purely for studies and it, it helps them to, to really do. It is normal for every child. You know, this is the first, I mean, exam period. So we tell them that they shouldn't really have any doubt or fear in them. That when they get to the hall, no one should rush. But just relax and they tell that somebody answer all, all, all the questions. So we, we keep on talking to them, advising them and, and encouraging them so that as, as they get into the hall, nothing will really take their minds off what they are, they are, they are supposed to do in the hall. Yes, it's, it's very crucial because when you rise to a particular level, you wouldn't want to fall from that height and we are doing our very best to maintain the standard or uh, even improve upon the standard we already have so therefore we deem it as a very key or necessary fact in preparing them that is why we had to go the step further to get this psychologist and he has been working on them he comes at least twice a week he talks to them he encourages them he knows how to deal with uh, this anxiety and all other external threats so they are in good shape and we feel it is very necessary that's why we took the bold step to do that i i think they are well prepared they're saying that when they get to form three from first term to the right of bc we camp them so we are able to give them enough time hi what's your name my name is Julius Abladi. Julius, how prepared are you um, for Monday? And what's the first paper, by the way? The first paper is English language. And I'm fully prepared for, I know the battle is for the Lord, and it will help me through. I know the battle is for the Lord, but if you haven't learned anything, the battle will not work. Even though I've learned, but I know the Lord will also do his part. But how, take me through how you study the English. English is a complex language how there's complex um, comprehension there's essay the summary how were you able to put all that together oh it was it was really a tough time but i was able to complete uh, i was able to complete so at the end of all of this what do you expect to get your grade i'm expected to get grade one because i i know english is my best subject and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But overall, with all the subjects combined, what do you want to get? Nine ones. Nine ones. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, congratulations in advance, even Thank though you, you haven't read it. Let me speak to, let me go to the back and speak to a few. Okay. I'm coming to you. What's your name? Isabella Niku. Isabella. 
you're writing English first. How prepared are you um, towards your first four papers? No, I'm, I'm very prepared. I've learned hard towards it. You say you've learned hard towards it. What people did you solve past questions? What have you been doing? I've been I've normally been writing compositions to improve on my essay writing and all that. So you sure you're getting a one in English? Yes, I'm sure. But overall, what do you expect to get? The grades? What do you want to get? Eighty five. Eighty eighty five. But I'm talking about the aggregates, the nine ones, you want to get six ones, what do you want to get? I want to get nine ones. Nine ones. Are you sure it will come to pass, right? Yes, please. All right, thank you. Who else wants to speak to me? Um, I'll be forced to speak to some of them at the back. Let me get closer to you. Hi. How are you doing? What's your name? Bio Squad. What? Bio Squad. Okay. How prepared are you? Monday is just approaching. Like a few years ago, some of us at this time, let me talk to your friends. Like you are busy learning. How is it going for you? It's going well. Mm, how prepared are you? I'm highly prepared. I know I've been, I've been telling your colleagues that English is quite a complex language, though you speak it every day. The summary, the comprehension, you know, essay writing, all of that. Which aspect have you mastered very well? You ready to blow it all? Um, literature. Literature. So you're, you're prepared 100%. All right. Thank you. All the best to all candidates in Monday's exam. Now, the Ghana Education Service is alarmed by the rising tramadol abuse among students and other youth. Ashanti Regional Director um, Mary also at Channel fears the situation can impact negatively on academic and moral training. She was speaking on the sidelines of a courtesy call on her by the victorious World Robotics team from Opokowari School. Supposed to complete a tax, supposed to make a robot that is going to pick balls from a table. And then on that same table, there are bottles on the table. So the robot is supposed to identify the bottles from the balls, pick the bottles, pick the balls, and then clear away the bottles and put it into a box fence for points. So the award we are awarded. The Pokwari School robotics team member, Nathaniel Okai, recounts events leading to victory. Best mechanic, mechanic. The school clinched RoboFest 2018's Innovation Award Senior Game at the Lawrence Technological University in the United States. Dr. Alexis Nimo is headmaster. Early this year, the school participated in a robotic competition, RoboFest competition in Accra, and won the competition. This gave us the opportunity to represent the country at the global competition in U.S., Michigan, U.S. The team went to Michigan and took part in the competition. Fortunately for us, there were about 24, 23 countries involved, like um, Japan, Mexico, and the rest, and the host country even U.S. And our school won the Senior Game Innovation Award. Regional Director of Education Mary Ousuachiang is optimistic the feat will inspire other schools in the region for such laurels. She, however, points out such high intellectual achievement can be sustained if students eschew narcotic substances like tramadol. I'm the luckiest regional director because this is the second school that is winning this award. Last year it was Premier College. And this year, it is the school, Opokuwari School. And um, I want to congratulate the headmaster, the staff, and especially the award winners. They have really done very well. If these boys had been taking tramadol and other drugs, I don't think they would have been able to achieve what we are seeing today. So my advice to all of them out there is that they should concentrate on their books. Reporter for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Now to our series on the road on the National Science and Maths Quiz. And today we take you to the Bronx Ahafo region. Schools in the region have been underdogs when it comes to the national competition. For the past 25 years, no single school from the Bronx Ahafo region has made it to the finals. 
So at the regional contest in Sunyani, the regional directorate of education set a target for qualified schools. Nothing more than a place in the finals. Here's a report by correspondent Nesta Kafui Ajoma. qualifying series of the National Science and Math Quiz kicked off with the sound of the timekeeper's bell followed by massive cheers from the competing schools. For the first timers, such as Krobo Community Senior High School, it was a dream come true. It was not surprising for Doma SHS, St. James Seminary SHS, Chinia Manfu SHTS, and the host Sunyani SHS to take the lead from the first to the last round. Notre Dame Girls SHS topped the group with 35 points, whilst Wenchi Methodist SHS came second with 26 points, and the celebration had begun. <laughs> However, it was intriguing to hear some schools score negative points during the competition. Kwatuna and Kuma Senior High School came fifth with negative four points. Jema <laughs> Senior High School came fourth with negative two points. Brong Ahav Regional Director of Education, Dr. Peter Atifwa, charged them to step up their preparations towards the national competition. <laughs> Contestants from Nafana Senior High School spoke with Joy News. The probability that it would win for us was not very high, but we are going to increase Still watching Joy News today. Still up ahead in this bulletin, Joy News launches 2018 World Cup coverage. Baba Tando has the details during the sports segment. When we come back. Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Hohoi Municipal Hospital in the Volta region has introduced a robust obstetric emergency system laced with other medical interventions as a measure in achieving a zero maternal death in 2018. The medical superintendent, Dr. Mensa, has appealed to all and sundry to support the hospital with 400,000 Ghana cities to set up an additional theater in achieving the feat. Joining us is Fred Kwame Asari has more the following report. Over the last decade, the Hohoi Municipal Hospital records an average of eight maternal deaths annually. To reverse the trend, the hospital launched a zero maternal death campaign in 2017. The initiative has led to a decrease in maternal deaths recorded at the hospital. Out of the 2,400 deliveries conducted last year, three lives were lost. No deaths have been recorded in 2018 so far. Medical Superintendent Dr. Pius Mensa outlined some modalities that contributed to the achievement. The first we did was that there was management commitment to improving maternal services in the facility. And so right from the top, there's a demonstrable management commitment to improving maternal care in the health service facility. And in doing that, we assigned resources to the strategy. And capacity building for staff to acquire the needed knowledge 
skill and superior competence in rendering maternal care. This was made possible through the specially supportive tobacco visit by our assigned specialists I've mentioned already to the hospital. During their visit, the strength of knowledge and skill acquisition. And even when they have left the facility, we keep in touch with them through teleconsultation. So we could manage cases that we would have otherwise have preferred in the hospital. Dr. Mensah, however, intimated an additional theatre is critical to achieving the objective of improving maternal health at the facility. This is the issue that we need to address if we are to achieve a zero maternal death. We have two operating theatres, but currently we are only able to use one. This is because the other one is not equipped. Thus, this is likely to impact on our ability to achieve zero target because there has been instances where there was an operation going on in that only one theatre and we had a maternal emergency. This nearly happened when we have to refer a pregnant woman to another hospital. The patient nearly died because we could not help her due to space and availability in the theatre. Meanwhile, a neonatal intensive care unit which receives about 30 cases monthly lacks some basic equipment. The unit assistant, Christiana Kumi, explained they improvise in some cases to save premature babies. It's a therapy machine. But we have an intensive one anyway, which looks more like the uh, incubator. Okay, so this is, the other one is an improvised phototherapy machine. And these are radiant moments, but we don't have incubators. And we take care of sick newborns and premature babies, like these, 29 weeks old, 27 males. First of all, we need incubators, if you can be provided, and then more of the photography lamps, because you have only one, and if you, in case you get more of our jaundice cases, you have to improvise or share this for more than one baby, which is not helping. The Volta region has seen a general decline in maternal mortality ratio between January and April 2017. Fred Kwame Asaris reports for Joy News. Now, on the 1st of June every year, Global Day of Parents is observed. The day, proclaimed by the UN General Assembly in 2012, is to honor parents throughout the world. It's an opportunity to appreciate all parents in all parts of the world for their selfless commitment to children and their lifelong sacrifice towards nurturing this relationship. In commemoration of the day, we bring back the story of Gladys Akron, the selfless single parent doing all she can to take care of her three children suffering cerebral palsy. Beryl Richter Anderson reports. <laughs> Meet Gladys, mother of five children. Three of Gladys's children all have speech and hearing impairments. Her fourth child, Richard Lamte, is 30 years. Richard's condition is the most serious. He suffers from epilepsy and cerebral palsy. After two years, it's a more bad on. After two years, he started having difficulties with his speech. When he had the convulsion, we all thought he had died. We even prepared a coffin for him, but he later gained consciousness. Gladys considered herself fortunate because her husband was supportive initially, but that support ceased after a few years. Their father has stopped catering for them. He now has children with other women. He barely checks up on them. And the last time he was here was two months ago, and he only gave us 100 cities. Lawrence is Gladys's fifth child. He is 28 years old. When Lawrence was only two years, he started showing symptoms of epilepsy. He was fine in his early days. I was therefore surprised when this happened. A pastor once told me that the medical conditions of my children are spiritual attacks. 
met a son now, fifty and Billy, I mean, Chucky, Billy, Chucky. Lawrence was once a brilliant student, but had to stop school because of his condition. It affected his writing skills. I always question God why three of my children are suffering. Consultant neurologist and head of Department of Medicine and Therapeutics at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Patrick Ejay explains cases of this nature could be linked to genetic abnormalities. It's a family of five where the last three are affected. Causes of such things, if you ask me, would be genetic. It could be a pure single gene inheritance, or it could be it could have occurred after the children were born, where they call the novel mutations after birth. People with conditions like that of Richard and Lawrence need frequent medical assessment and attention. But unfortunately, due to the lack of finance, Gladys is unable to access health care services for the two. As is typical in many societies, Gladys and her children have been stigmatized in a lot of ways. <laughs> I am now used to the insults. They are my children. I can't kill them. My only prayer is that they should die before I do. Because if I die first, I don't think anybody else will take care of them like I do. The burden of a mother, the weight of motherhood, the need for love and the outlook of better times ahead. That's the story of Gladys Akron. For Joy News, Beryl Ernestina Richter. All the best to this woman, Mrs. Akron. Thanks for watching Joy News today. I am Daniel Dazi. We now make way for business with Emmanuel Abwaziwiafi.